Hello, this is Dean Phoenix with part 5 of my overpowered guide for Final Fantasy X. So we try and be as overpowered as possible and use some neat tricks to get ahead of the game and level up the characters to be extremely powerful early on. Now this is following on from the section of the game in Luca, where if you have watched the Blitzball parts of my guide, we'll have won the match against the Luca goers and got an extra strength sphere, which is very powerful, can add plus 4 strength for somebody early in the game. And uh, if you've also done the bit where we've played the League of Blitzball, I will also have a Teleport Spear and probably some Return Spheres from the Top Scorer Prize. So first I'm just going to have a little bit of a look at the Spear Grid. So Oron has just joined us and his grid is very straightforward. And because this is a standard grid playthrough, and we'll be going on to Expert on a separate playthrough later, it's pretty self-explanatory. The only one that's different I want to go over is Kimari's here. So after Kimari joins, you just want to be going down the left side of this central circle that he starts in and making your way to this and you see he's got a, uh, a few sphere levels for me there because he has reached a level 1 node and he can't go any further but we're very soon going to take measures into uh, account to get the level 1 key spheres we need two of them to break into Riku's grid and get him steal and use which are here uh, just at the start of Riku's grid. Now that will give him steel to be able to use that command in battle and is also then going to come up against that level 2 lock which prevents you from breaking into Yuna's grid. But the end game is to follow Yuna's grid, get that and just save up all of these sphere levels for Kimari and have him use steel in every battle so he still gets uh, ability points and then we're going to get enough sphere levels so that as soon as we get a level 2 key sphere in Makalania uh, we can go straight down to Holy and he will be extremely powerful so try not to waste any sphere levels with Kamari just head straight for that level 1 lock and he will end up being really really powerful um, for the uh, sort of two thirds of the story after we carry on from Makalania uh, there is also this part here where you can uh, on the very start of the high road you can speak to the summon of Dogamine and uh, she will basically uh, heal your Aeons for free so you don't have to worry about your Aeons being healed and that means that you can uh, take the time before speaking to her to get into a battle random encounter and just uh, get Balfour's overdrive full or as, as high as possible. And what happens is that she will summon uh, Ifrit and you will have to fight her Ifrit but you can't use your own Ifrit against her so you have to use Valfor which is why we're getting Valfor's overdrive full up and if you've got energy blast, energy blast does an absolute ton of damage and the Ifrit that you're facing here has about 3500 hit points so if you can do about 1000 uh, hit points which you should very easily be able to do with a couple of attacks and it teaches you about using shield in the little tutorial uh, then you can use energy blast to do a ton of damage there and get an overkill and uh, when you've actually knocked out this Aeon, you get a Seeker's Ring for Yuna, which you're going to equip. And that gives HP plus 10% and also Silence Ward. So it's more difficult for enemies to inflict silence on Yuna, which is very useful. So as soon as you uh, complete this and she gives you the item, you want to go into the menu and equip and equip it. So yeah, basically just make sure that you have a random encounter with Valfour and fill up her overdrive and then you get that echo ring there and you can go straight into the menu and equip that for you know which is very useful and so every time you come across Belgamin uh, you want to beat her using much the same technique you will get into a random encounter and then uh, get the overdrives of your Aeons uh, filled up so that you can uh, beat her one on one with the Aeons that she has so just going to see here we're going to have the Seeker's Ring already and we're going to equip the Echo Ring which is basically the same thing but with Silent Sword as well. Now, there are a couple of enemies you want to watch out for. Uh, these encounters with two bombs and a dual horn can be uh, quite difficult but you make sure that Kimari uses Lancet on both the dual horn and on the grenades uh, because they will both give him a different Ronso uh, rage overdrive so uh, make sure you especially do the one for dual horn because when we get to uh, the thunder planes fire breath is extremely useful with slayer um, for killing the quack cactuars the quack toires, not cactuars they're the baby version uh, when you get to this inn uh, this bloke will give you a level 1 key sphere which is very useful but we need two of them so we're going to bear that in mind because we definitely want to make sure that we have two of them for this uh, next battle that we're going to be doing uh, against the boss which you have to fight it in quite a specific way uh, Rop is also there now his salary is 200 gil a game but he's a really good player now I was playing Blitzball in Luca, so he has already um, been signed here but you can sign him and then uh, Rin will give you an Albed Primer just there as you go to leave 
and as you're leaving the inn, uh, you ha in the morning you have to fight this Chocobo Eater boss. Now the Chocobo Eater is quite interesting, apart from giving me uh, flashbacks to having to fight Earth Eater in the Monster Arena many many times, which we'll come on to in many hours time. <laughs> This boss is quite an interesting one because it has 10,000 hit points, which sounds like a lot, but I was hitting so hard at this point that uh, I almost killed it. Very well, I very easily killed it, so uh, I had to resort to a strange tactic of actually healing the boss itself. So first of all, make sure that Kimari and Waka have had a, a turn in battle, and uh, make sure that um, after we've uh, basically had everybody have a turn, have Tidus cast haste on Lulu, Oren himself, and on Yuna. And uh, what you need to do is you need to, uh, as basically, as quickly as possible, you need to knock him over. Uh, it knocks him onto his back. And when you knock him onto his back and then do more damage, you knock him further towards the cliff that is at his back. And uh, he will also have that attack that can push you and knock you off onto the high road. So you basically need to uh, make sure that you push him off the cliff and the reason we're doing that is if you beat him normally you get the uh, experience and everything else that you would normally get but if you can push him off the cliff you get two level one key spheres instead and that will let you break through the level one locks that are in Kimari's way and let him get to Riku's area of the sp sphere grid as we just said before and get steel and use which is extremely useful and the reason that this is so important is because we're saving up Kimari's sphere levels um, until Makalania, so he's not going to be a very powerful character. Um, but giving him steel and use uh, gives him a useful command to be able to use even though he's not doing much damage and make sure that he still gets ability points so that he still gets the sphere levels and we have enough sphere levels to actually level him up and reach holy, which makes him extremely powerful. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind there. So as you can see, I'm doing about 500 damage a hit, depending on what attacks it is. So I need to cast haste on Yuna and make sure that she is fast enough um, to be able to actually cure the boss so that I don't kill him by accident. And you can also use delay attack with Tidus, which will knock him back uh, and slow the boss down. So after you kill him and knock him off the edge, you will get the uh, level 1 key sphere. So just make sure you don't uh, deplete all of his hit points. You want to knock him off the actual edge um, and keep curing him with Yuna if needed. And uh, then you can use these level 1 key spheres that you get from defeating him and you can break into Riku's grid. Now there are a couple of really good nodes here, um, so there are hit point nodes, there's a agility plus 3 node which is also really good and then a couple of other sphere points, that, uh, sphere levels down there's a strength plus 2. So all of those are pretty decent but um, for the three sphere levels it would take to get to the strength node and then the one to backtrack, uh, I would prefer not to use those nodes so I just went straight for steel and use and you see there that uh, Kimari's come up against that two level two lock and so every battle he's just going to be using uh, steel and uh, then we're going to save up his sphere levels until we can get a level two lock. Uh, now you see here there's a uh, Albed Primer just on the road there, uh, Albed Primer 9, uh, because you have the option if you speak to the person outside the travel lodge you can use a um, chocobo for free. And there are several yellow feathers on the road as well. I love yellow feathers. There are three of those. And you want to make sure that you use all of those with the chocobo because one of them will get you a fortune sphere, which are very rare. Now you see there that that strength plus two, uh, where Tidus is now, that node, I have used the strength sphere on with him and activated it to give him plus four strength. And then I'm going to use the, the luck sphere, which we got in Kilika, and the fortune sphere, which we just picked up using the chocobo and activate the luck plus four as well. So plus four strength and plus four luck are a massive boost for Tidus and uh, that makes it a bit more versatile because he does uh, damage comparable to Orin but he will also have high luck uh, which makes it easier for him to hit flyers so you have another option and you don't have to hit every flyer with Waka. Now when you get to the end of the uh, path you can go uh, back down there's uh, another path to the right and you can see there just got the Saturn crest and uh, you want to make sure you pick that up. Now, because I'd done about an hour and ten minutes grinding, uh, I was actually able to start activating the uh, Ra spells, the Thundara, Blizzara, and those ones. And uh, once you've uh, activated Thundara there, uh, this is where the playing the Blitzball come into came into play. If you have done the uh, League, as I suggested in my optional Blitzball video. And if you won the League with the Teleport Sphere, you can teleport to any node that anybody else has activated. So because Lulu's activated that middle spell, uh, Yuna can teleport right there and then she can activate those four spells and then you can use the return spheres that you got as top scorer prizes 
from the same blitz ball or from playing a blitz ball tournament when you got attack reels uh, and you can uh, very easily get the uh, four spells activated and so those couple of hours of blitz ball are really worth doing uh, because it gives you know the four spells and as you're about to see um, you can look here and compare the stats so uh, Lulu's got 28 magic and 7 agility so she's quite powerful and when she's got those second uh, rare spells which we've got quite early from doing the grinding she's very powerful but Yuna has 29 magic and 13 agility so she's actually a faster and slightly more powerful version of Lulu if you do that especially if you use the four sphere levels um, to go to the magic plus two nodes that are on that section of Lulu's grid as well before using the return sphere to go back so you see there Lulu did about 1400 which is massive damage because we've got those spells early but Yuna does even more damage because she has even higher magic so this is a part of the overpowered playthrough that's very useful and then even though Kimari is not a powerful character because we're saving his sphere levels he can use steel or he can uh, utilize certain items with the use command which can be very useful so that he can take a turn and still have it be useful there now uh, you can see Tidus is doing even more damage than Orin uh, but Orin very quickly come uh, quite quickly comes up on a strength plus four sphere uh, at which point he's doing really high damage as well and Tidus has higher luck than most enemies so he will quite often do a critical hit too uh, relative to how he would do if you hadn't activated the luck plus four sphere so basically if you have the patience for playing that uh, Blitzball League and followed the optional guidance in the video uh, you can have two extremely powerful black mages instead of one and Yuna doesn't have to waste her turns uh, like doing unnecessary healing or defending or anything like that she really adds to the power and the thing about this is it makes it a lot easier to overkill enemies so the, it's a, the opposite of a vicious cycle the more things you overkill the more ability points they get, the more sphere levels, and it just keeps getting more and more powerful, and the party remains very strong. So I hope you found that useful. Please like and subscribe, and I will be back with another part in short order. Thank you.